You know, it's really funny to me every time I check through the comments and the Discord and I hear you guys talk about 491 and 20 like you absolutely know them and you know all the jokes and you know all of the little things and 491's peaches and 20 is the angry elf. And some of you also know about 346 and call our grandma, but you guys are so focused on those two engines and then I have to remember, oh yeah, those are the only two that I really show on the channel because 346 has been out of service since before I started doing YouTube full time or even before I started making YouTube videos actually. She's been out of service since November of 2021. Comes time every 15 years or so, uh, maybe less depending on the class of service a locomotive gets, that a steam locomotive needs to be rebuilt. They call it a 1472 day inspection. If you ever hear the term 1472, this is what we're talking about. You have to take the flues and tubes out of the boiler, go through and recertify and put new tubes in and kind of rebuild everything along the way. And that sort of disassembly gets pretty extensive, which means that you tend to want to fix everything that you've come across while you're doing that process so that you get a good 15 years worth of service. So what is 1472? Well, that's the amount of service days that you're allowed to accrue before you have to do that rebuild. Most of us in preservation don't tend to get there because we run our engines, you know, maybe 30 times a year. We get 30 service days in a year. So it'd take you a long time to get to 1,472. And so they also put a limit on the number of years. So it's 1,472 days or 15 years after either the first fire or one year after the last tube was put in. So the clock starts ticking once tubes go in or fire happens in the boiler. And once you hit that time, it's time to rebuild the locomotive. And that's where we've been with 346. And we've got tons of projects at the Colorado Railroad Museum all the time. So it can be challenging to focus on the big rebuilds sometimes when we've got to work on keeping the other two engines in service and the restorations and all of the other fun that comes up midway through. But I wanted to talk about something that comes along with the 1472, and that is the FRA Form 4. Now, what's that about? Well, in order to find out, we need to talk a little bit more about all of these numbers on the boiler and the kind of lines and grid stuff that's going on. So let's take a closer look. All right, you can see as we walk down the boiler, this is the bare boiler. You don't actually tend to see this. It's usually got insulation or lagging and then a jacket over it. And there's also usually cab and things here in the way too. But anyway, you can see that we've got all these different numbers written down. And that is the thickness of the boiler barrel at each of those locations in thousandths of an inch. So that's 0.490, so 490 thousandths of an inch, just a little bit less than a half inch. Thankfully for us, that's what this boiler primarily used to be made out of. Most of the uh, cylindrical sections were half inch plate. And so when you see a number like 0.491, wow, it's really only gotten a little bit thinner over the course of its life. So how and why do we do that? Well, to answer the how, we need to figure out if grandma's pregnant. Wait, uh, well, this is grandma, because she's the oldest. Um, and this is an ultrasound tester. Oh, a uh, different kind of ultrasound, right, sorry. This little meter right here is an ultrasonic thickness tester. And so what you do is you apply some couplant fluid to the tester or to the location. And you can kind of see the residue from that. And then you place the meter on and it'll tell you how thick the steel is in that location. Of course, making sure that you're calibrated and tested and your meter's verified and all that fun too. And then that way you can determine, using the ultrasonic technology, you can determine how thick the boiler is in all of its various different places. So that's the how, but why? Well, the why involves the age and history of these locomotives and the fact that we're in preservation railroading rather than back in the steam era. I joked about 346 being grandma earlier because she's the old one. That is our little pet name for her, her nickname. She's the oldest operating engine in the state of Colorado. 
1881. Well, at least steam locomotive, I should say. She was built in 1881 by Baldwin Locomotive Works, and she has actually run at the museum since 1962, making her service life for the museum be longer than her service life for the railroad she was built for, which is hilarious. And then you look behind her, and there's 491. 491 was still in service on the Rio Grande when 346 started operating at the museum in preservation. It's kind of mind-boggling how the time works out like that. But all that said, 346, when she was new, was built as a Class 70, um, and throughout the years, some changes happened. 1914, she gets a big rebuild, gets a new steel boiler, and that is this boiler. This boiler is from 1914. And not much has really changed with it since then. There have been many updates during preservation as things get found. Some patchwork has been done, the dry pipe's been replaced, etc. throughout the years. In fact, at her last big rebuild, the Strasburg Railroad out in Pennsylvania welded in a flush belly patch to one of the courses for exactly the reason we're talking about all of these thickness measurements. See, one of these boilers is designed with a pretty hefty safety factor. And a safety factor is basically, hey, we want to run this thing at 160 PSI, you know, double that or quadruple that, design it for that amount of pressure, and that way we know that it'll be safe at the pressure we want to run it at. So all boilers are required to have a minimum safety factor of four. So for the ease of math, 491 runs at 200, at least it did on the railroad, and found some engineering things that made us change that. But originally, 200 PSI, so they designed for 800. So 346, 160, 320, 640. You calculate everything out for 640 PSI and make sure that it works for that number. And so, as these sheets get older, you're getting water in the boiler, because you need water in the boiler and all that to actually operate the locomotive. Things will start to corrode, things will rust. Uh, even if you treat the boiler the best you absolutely can and try and get rid of all of the oxygen that you possibly can and all of these different things, you can try and mitigate any sort of pitting or corrosion in a boiler, but you can never totally get rid of it. And so if the boiler sees service or if it sits out and slowly degrades over time, everything is trying to return to the dirt somewhere or another, things are going to shrink and things are going to degrade. And so all across this boiler, mostly originally half inch sheets, well, now it's a little bit less than that. You know, maybe it's 10,000 less, maybe it's 100,000 less. And so the FRA allows you a minimum thickness. You need 60% of what you originally had there for much of the boiler, but you also still have to meet that minimum safety requirement of a safety factor of four. And so we surveyed the boiler at a bunch of different places, specifically on a grid to get a good amount of data points across the whole boiler. And we figure out, okay, well, we've got a nominal average kind of what the sheets look like and we find the worst spots we can. And okay, we'll use those for the calculations. That'll be the safest thing. So you spend a lot of time doing extra measurements in the places that pit the worst down here in the belly underneath or around the bottom of the firebox, the mud ring. Those sorts of places tend to get into the worst shape based on just the way the boiler operates. You check all those places and make sure that the numbers still add up. And maybe you have to derate the boiler or maybe you have to cut some chunks out and replace some stuff. But that's all part of the rebuild. We wanna make sure that we can continue to operate this engine for a long time safely. So we gotta go through and address anything that comes up. And thankfully, the survey's actually been pretty good. That said, there is some stuff that we're probably gonna have to take care of too. I think perhaps my favorite thing to look at and see in the spoiler is actually this little patch down here. In 1881, Baldwin really didn't have the locomotive totally sorted out yet. They didn't quite have everything 
figured out all the nuts and bolts uh, quite perfectly. They had not perfected and refined their design yet. Uh, and particularly not in the narrow gauge where everything is a close profile and made down in a pretty small way. Everything's really tight together and there's not a lot of clearance for a lot of things. And especially not for, oh, I don't know, the suspension and the boiler. <laughs> so 346, um, the leaf spring of the suspension and its associated keepers and everything right here as it goes down the railroad um, has bonked into the boiler right here many, many, many thousands of times. And you can see how much it's hammered in this patch that it actually hammered in the sheet and the railroad said, okay, we're gonna rivet in a patch and goodness knows when they did that. Uh, riveted patch, who knows? <laughs> Probably before the 1930s if I had to guess, but hard to say. And then it has bumped in the patch pretty significantly. So the hilarious thing is, is that last time she got rebuilds, this checked out with the math. And has it gotten worse? Maybe, maybe not. We'll compare the data last time and we'll run the math and check it. That may not need anything. That might still meet a safety factor of four. That's how strong these boilers really are. But it is one of the more shocking things to look at. And that's actually just kind of reality of these things. That's why we have engineering. That's why we do these processes so that you can go through and check all those things because you might look at that and go, oh my God, that's awful when it's actually okay. And then some other things that might look okay, maybe aren't. So that's why we go through and we do the math. You do the calculations and you certify these things so that you can guarantee that the locomotive is gonna be safe and suitable for service when it gets put back in and put back together. The nice thing about the FRA Form 4 is that it's literally a form and it's just form number four and you can actually go through and just download this and look at it and learn. The, the FRA is actually really good at showing all of the different things that still exist and need to be done with everything, not just steam locomotives. But if you look through 49 CFR, which is the 49th Code of Federal Regulations, uh, and you look at the different parts, most of the parts in 200 are all related to train things. Steam locomotives are part 230. You can find all of the information and all of the rules about steam locomotives and boilers in there. So definitely a great resource. Uh, it is a little bit boilerplate, literally, uh, not to make too much of a joke there. But, uh, it, you know, not the best thing to read uh, in terms of uh, entertainment value, but educationally, if you haven't read it, definitely a good thing to read and definitely a good thing to be familiar with if you're going to work on these locomotives. Uh, form 4 specifically is the form related to all of the specifications about the boiler. Who made it? When? Etc. Uh, and then the details about all of the steel in the boiler, all of the stuff. Uh, the thickness, etc. Uh, this is where you determine what pressure the boiler can run at. It goes through every little piece of it and makes sure that it's all good. Uh, so it's actually really kind of in depth in this way and really cool to see. So definitely check that out if you're interested in this sort of nerdy thing. So that's kind of where we're at with 346. Uh, she's midway through the rebuilds, still kind of at the assessment stage. The UT survey is almost done. We just got to get a couple more readings in the firebox that I'm probably going to get this week. And then we'll know all of those things. We can prepare the form for, do the calculations, and see exactly what is going to be done to the engine as far as the boiler goes. We already know there's some stuff that's got to be taken care of just by the nature of having the locomotive in service. Sometimes a lot of the things you find are things that you experience as train crew or during inspections. You take a look and go, oh, well, it's... It's grooving a little bit there, it's pitting a little bit there that you can see and you know, okay, well, we'll get that on the next rebuild. She's still got a long way to go, but you guys tend to ask, hey, what's up with 346? And I figured, hey, this would be a good time to talk a little bit about the Form 4, a little bit about the 1472, and we'll be making more videos about it uh, as things progress. But hopefully you enjoyed this little look at a little bit of the madness here. Let me know if you have any questions and if you'd be interested in seeing any of the calculations and the math behind it, because 
Some of it's really simple and some of it's a little complex. So it'd be fun to teach if you guys would be interested in learning. So either way, thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time.